In the late 17th century, Robert Hooke was trying to get an ant to hold still. Hooke was an early user of a new tool called the compound microscope and was seeing some of humanity's first glimpses into tiny worlds. He looked at everything from bread mold to his own urine to insects like the ant. But when recording his observations, the ant, perhaps unsurprisingly, refused to stay put. Hook managed to temporarily knock it out with a few drops of brandy and immortalized it in the pages of a book called Micrographia. Sometimes, tools like Hook's microscope open entirely new fields of science to explore. And that's just what's happening right now when it comes to viruses. New tools and technologies let us peer into worlds that would have been impossible to see even a few decades ago. These tools let us view things on different scales, each a window into how a virus works. Essentially, a virus is just a piece of genetic material wrapped inside a shell. So let's start at the level of DNA with a technique called genomic sequencing. A genome is all the genetic material inside an organism, the set of DNA or RNA instructions for how it looks, works, and grows. Humans have a genome. Ants have a genome. Even viruses have a genome. And genomic sequencing lets us decode all that information. This is what a decoded genome looks like. A string of letters. You may be thinking, hmm, uh, that still looks like code. And you're not wrong. All the combinations of letters still have to be analyzed to understand what we're seeing. But over the last few decades, we've gotten pretty good at doing that and doing it quickly. This is the genome of SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID-19, about 30,000 letters. It took less than 48 hours to decode. Using genomic sequencing, we can now track a virus's evolution almost in real time, as we have during the pandemic. We can understand how it spreads and raise alarms when dangerous variants arise. Understanding a virus's genome is key to understanding how it works and necessary for making diagnostic tests and vaccines for threats like COVID-19. Okay, so we can read a virus's code. Let's zoom out to the next level, understanding its structure. Figuring out how a virus's structure allows it to infect cells can help researchers develop defenses against it. Things like vaccines and antiviral drugs. But viruses are small, too small for a conventional microscope. So one way we peer into their minuscule worlds is with a technique called X-ray crystallography. Scientists create crystals from a virus's proteins, fire X-rays at them, and measure how the X-rays scatter. Those measurements can reveal detail on an atomic level. Zoom out again. Another imaging tool is the electron microscope. Electron microscopes bounce a beam of subatomic particles off a sample surface to magnify objects up to 50 million times, giving us a look at the shape of the overall virus. It's a view into the microscopic world that's a million times better than Robert Hooke ever saw. So that's the micro level, but we can zoom out even further to a macro scale, understanding how human populations are infected by viruses. Mathematical modeling lets us look at big trends as they unfold and gives us a window into possible futures. How might a disease spread? How will a virus mutate? Using estimates for things like the total number of infections in a city or the percentage of people wearing masks, Researchers run their disease models many times to determine likely outcomes. These models can help public health experts manage the spread of a disease. But new diseases bring many unknowns, and humans can be hard to predict. So, as we're tested for COVID-19 and get our shots, researchers continually refine their models. Rather than just predicting likelihoods, Researchers can use data collected by frontline healthcare providers to get a better picture of what's actually unfolding. Moving forward, we may use another type of predictive modeling to help protect against different strains of viruses like SARS-CoV-2. We already do this for the annual flu shot. 
Using genomic sequencing, researchers track flu infections all over the world, noting how different strains are evolving and which vaccines have worked most effectively against them. That modeling, which incorporates on-the-ground data collection, helps determine the makeup of our annual flu shot and can steer resources to where they're most needed. We may see something similar with COVID-19 or other diseases in future years. Meanwhile, researchers are making our existing tools faster and stronger. And completely new technologies are on the horizon. Who knows what discoveries lie ahead? <laughs>